everyone. This is Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 8, video 4, and this is the recovery series. And I'm in my, actually I've completed three weeks of playing. Um, yesterday, actually, marked three weeks. And it's very interesting. So you heard my first notes of the day. And let me just tell you briefly a couple things that I've been doing. The only thing I've been doing differently this week than last week is actually because I'm physically getting stronger. Um, I'm adding some range. I'm adding a bit of range. Um, sometimes the higher register maybe to high B flat is fine in certain ways. Otherwise, all of a sudden I can do certain things and not tongue it well. And all of a sudden I can feel a little fatigue there. Yesterday, um, and of course, let me make a, a footnote here, is that depending on how the rest of my body feels, of course, will contribute immensely to what I can and can't do in terms of endurance or range-wise, or even being able to take a good breath. Um, so that's been very interesting in terms of taking a full free breath. My asthma uh, doesn't exist right now, and I'm going to knock on some wood and, and hope that it can stay like that. As you can see, there's Atlantis chiming in, giving her two cents. Um, and so when I'm tired, and I know a lot of people have experienced this, this isn't anything new, but when you're tired, isn't it interesting how you can't take a breath the way you'd like? And so last night I had a little more energy and my breathing felt better and I played the opening of the David um, to that point. And it felt pretty good. And the tonguing wasn't too bad. I can't maybe play as short as I'd like, but it, was, it, was, it wasn't bad. And I played some other things, um, went to a high D, felt pretty good in slurs, but I don't sit and stay up there a long time. I go up, I come down. I go up, I come down. Okay, I just don't stay up there, stay up there. No, not for me right now. Right, girl? I don't do that. Um, and I still am basically starting the same way you heard me start three weeks ago. 
And that's the way I've been starting for years now. So that's proven to be a very good starting point. Um, doing these kind of squiggles and noodling around, a lot of glissing. And then the slurs are starting to feel better. And as the air support system feels better and my energy is better and um, my embouchure strength overall just kind of feels stronger without feeling overly muscle bound. And basically my practice schedule is once a day. Very rarely, I think maybe a couple of days in the three week period did I pick it up two times. Um, with extended period of time off. So it's basically just the way our schedule is working right now is that I'll play in the evening for about an hour, usually even starting later than this, sometimes starting at 8, sometimes 7.30, something like that, just because of how our um, schedules are working out, and which gives me a 24-hour break between each practice session. And that feels really good to do that right now. It really, really does. So I'll play a little bit more of maybe some things you've heard before. And you can assess according to the other videos that you've heard in this series, whether things sound a little more stable, whether this microphone I'm using is picking up subtle differences in sound stability, sound dimensionality, sound timbre. Those kind of things. So, you know, you can use these things to listen to somebody who's recovering after, you know, taking almost three months off. Okay? Let's do a little more. very interesting. One interesting note about today, since I played longer, definitely I stayed in the high range longer last night and played hour, uh, hour and played, yes, I played about an hour, but played up there in the higher range longer for a longer period of time. A couple of lyrical things that were more sustained up there. I feel this horizontal area from uh, hinge joint to hinge joint, this imaginary bar, I feel like I'm biting down on something a little bit. Not in a negative way, but in a way that you feel the embouchure grip and fuse together. So I do feel a little more muscle bound, maybe you would say stiffer than yesterday. Um, but I can definitely feel that my low range has more substance. Uh, than yesterday and more stability. Um, I feel like I can sit in that pocket of sound more and maintain the vibrancy and the core. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, the basic slurs feel very together, but it's mostly the fact, and, and I've noticed at other times that when playing in the high range, if you do it intelligently and take the right amount of breaks, shh, 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 puppy, I'll let you speak in a moment. <laughs> um, I feel a benefit in the lower range. 
It doesn't get as diffuse. It hangs in there in its core and its center. It grips to the center more. And I'm definitely feeling that. So it just points out things I've already known, but now I'm, I'm seeing their benefit. Hi, I'm seeing their benefit. <laughs> are you seeing their benefit in a different way too? Or are you think? Are you thinking, finally, daddy's sounding better? <laughs> um, anyway, let me play a little bit more and see what else we discover. Even when I'm speaking right now, since I've been playing, I feel these hinge joints. A little more today. Interesting. interesting what's happening right now is I'm feeling my corners get firmer and firmer and firmer and I'm thinking now's the time for a three to five minute break it's not that it hurts or contorted or feeling off it's just feeling in terms of feeling distribution that part of the embouchure is a little sticking out too much in terms of feeling. So I would take maybe five minutes and come back and do the rest of my warm up and maybe try to play some other things. Okay. So that's what I'd be doing now. And other times where I've felt stiff, um, or the embouchure um, the way that it sits isn't as balanced yeah. as I feel comfortable with, I definitely take more yeah, time. She loves this video. Boy, she can't stop talking about it. How's your embouchure yeah. feel? Huh? How's your embouchure feel? <laughs> you want to say hi to everybody? Say hi to everybody. Say hi to everybody. Come on. <laughs> Incredible creatures, parrots. As a matter of fact, on a CD of mine called A New at Home, uh, maybe some of you have heard it, there's a piece called The French Monkey. And that was our nickname for our parrot for some... There was a couple of reasons why, but it's about my parrot. And she used yeah. to be able to sing that when I'd play it. She'd sing it right back. Um, the piece is a little high yeah. and stays up there, so I wouldn't dare demonstrate it right now. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I think this, this basic yeah. video gives you some idea of how things are going. Um, I can do my faster slurs, for example. Now that last one kind of sounded bizarre. And I don't think sounded actually very good. 
<laughs> very good. Sorry about all this turning. Um, but some of the of the lip trills didn't feel too bad. Uh, I had to remember to make sure with the speed that there was an accompanying air speed with the speed of the slur. Not forced, but really have your air align itself to the movement of the embouchure in a supportive way. It is called air support. So I'm going to continue on with my warm up, but um, maybe next time I'll already have played a bit and then maybe come on. We'll see. I hope this is useful. Okay? Um, it's been an interesting process. And I'll let you know when I'll... If I, I have a feeling that I'd probably be further along in my playing in terms of the embouchure strength if I had had every day free to go, I'll play a little bit here, I'll play a little bit six hours later, and I'll play a little bit six hours later. But basically... I think it's coming along, and you know what? Having that 24-hour break, which is nice, I can do that, feels pretty good.